um, to first Kappa meeting that we've had in a long time. Let's let's do roll call first, please, Will. Sure. Uh, Barbara Hirsch. Here. James Bennett. Here. Smitty West. Here. Christine Steiner. Here. Susan Amet. Susan Stinsmulen Amen. Here. Susan. My apologies. It's all right. All present. All right. Thank you. Those are our Kappa members. I welcome public. I'm so glad that there are people interested in arts and in our community. Uh, I'm Smitty, and uh, myself and Christine are the uh, Arts Commission uh, representatives on the committee to approve public art. And we've we've been uh, we've been fortunate in this city that our forebears before us uh, saw to it that uh, a city that calls itself an art city. Has a has a uh, uh, has a law that development comes along with public art to beautify our city to to uh, support our artist community, and um, uh, so when they put that into place for public art, we have a uh, a public art fund, and uh, in in the spirit of democracy, it is. Uh, guided by both the Arts Commission and uh, CAPA, which is an independent board that consists of artists from the community and uh, 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 as well as commission members uh, and, uh, and a member, Jamie, from the uh, Planning Commission as well. So we're, we're pleased to try to be government at its best here. So I, I welcome you all for being here. Uh, we'll dispense with the pledge, no flag, uh, and we're going to go straight to public comments right now. So um, uh, any where do they do this? Sure, so we can have uh, any individual come and step forward here to place their comment. We have two public comments that have signed in today. So first we have Bernadette uh, at address to go forward with us. Yeah, please uh, you have to uh, state your name and, and where you live, and then uh, you got three minutes to. Uh, sure. My name is Bernadette Gpiero, and I have lived in Ohio for 54 years. I worked here at the Oaks from when it started. I was one of the first people that Sheila hired to do the arts program. Um, I continued to work with her on cruise ships. And I continue to still do that now. I started in 1992 with her doing the arts programs uh, for Silver Sea Cruise Line. I'm here because during all those years that I worked here at the Oaks, I did exercise in one of the back rooms that had the most fantastic bot bot key mural. And I read something in the newspaper recently that you guys, whoever is in charge of this, is um, thinking about doing a mural. And I just want to encourage that because I think it's a great idea. It was something that was a part of the Oaks for so many years. It meant a lot to all the people that came here. And I would love to see a mural happen again. Um, I was on the Arts Commission. I've been on the board of the chamber. So I'm a, you know, my person. And so I just wanted to voice my opinion. Thank so you. Thank, thank you. you. Our second public comment is uh, Gail. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wrote my name down because I didn't know if I was going to speak or not. I was thinking that you would all have something to say and then I could say something back. But what I'd like to, and I'm going to kind of follow your format. I've been in Ohio over 47 years and I was on the first appointed arts committee meeting with the city with, from uh, Nina Shelley, mayor and the city council in person. Uh, and it, it involved going into being an official arts commission meeting. And during, I'm gonna say my reign, my participation over 13 years in that arts commission, we produced the art in public places and that wasn't easy but we did it and I'm really so proud looking at all the art in our city that is public art so this kind of piqued my curiosity is what was this meeting called for and and um, I encourage any and all art in public places um, I'm not sure if you're 
asking for what should be done or what is available. But, you know, we have a whole mystique of artists in Ojai that can do. And I'm hoping that you would keep whoever the powers be, keep it local art artists to produce whatever you need in this Ojai city building. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and let me uh, let me just address uh, both of our public comments before we move on. Uh, Will, for, uh, staff is going to tell us more about what this process actually is. But I, I, I wanted to be clear that uh, the the ordinance calls for the CAPA to make a recommendation to the Arts Commission, which then goes to council and them being the elected representatives are the only ones that can approve anything. So today. But it is, but this has to be uh, publicized. So this is the opportunity for the public to speak up with their, with their comments. So if anyone has comments, this is the time to share it because that will not be part of the discussion as we move on. The so, only clarification is that under the statute, uh, the Arts Commission makes the final decision. Yeah. It's not that it goes to City Council, unlike certain other budgetary and other. Thank you, Christine. So you will have the opportunity at the next or at a future Arts Commission meeting to come again, and you can address what what is whatever transpires here in the next hour. So, okay. Well, will something transpire here? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going to discuss it. Yes, we're going to discuss the ordinance. We're going to discuss the proposal, and then we're going to discuss among ourselves what we think of that. But and so. I was just trying to solicit any more. If anyone's going to have anything to say from the public, this is the time. I just about to close it. I can I can recognize. And then I'll come back to you. Please step forward. Really, really, I'm not going to step forward. It's really fast. Just really consider local artists. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I thank you. No more public comments. One more public comment. Good. There you have Wendy. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> we, my family was lucky enough to move here in 1969 with our two little kids. And while we were trying to get established in a business, we spent part of the time working at Mount Dowling Shop right now on Oak Street, which isn't here anymore. But as part of the joy that we had working here, we would come to the Oaks that on a Friday night and Dale Hansen would, or Lynn Hansen would be playing in in the other room and we just enjoyed it we felt like the door was always open to the public and we just thought that was so wonderful but as far as art goes i've walked by here so many times and watched while this was all taking place and i personally am so grateful to the people who decided to take on this project and to restore the hotel to the part of the community it used to be and as far as i'm concerned Every craftsman who worked on this is an artist. I mean, everything that you look at, you just, oh my gosh, it's just incredible. And I heard about the artwork that he posed. I think it's magnificent to carry on with the tradition of the community and all. I could say a lot more of it. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. We're very, yeah, we're very pleased uh, to welcome to Ojai, uh, one of our newest staff members over at the city, uh, Mr. Will Petner, and he is our liaison to the Arts Commission from the city staff, and he's going to give us a little primer on, on what's going on here today. Great. Um, so we have just one staff report today. Uh, as Smitty noticed, and it's great to meet you all and see you all in person today. Um, we are here for the CAPA decision on public art proposal at 122 East Ojai Avenue, uh, which as we know is important to be the El Robar Hotel. Um, the uh, staff recommendation is for the committee to approve public art, to consider and make recommendation to approve the merits of the public art proposal presented by the private developers at 122. East Ohio Avenue. Um, just to take a step back, I think it's been about three years since Kappa has had uh, a, an official meeting. Uh, so just to kind of, kind of like I noticed, uh, present a little bit more information background as to why we're here today. 
Uh, CAPIT is a public body with five members, three members from the Arts Commission or others appointed by the Arts Commission. Uh, we have one Planning Commission represented, uh, appointed by the Planning Commission, as well as an additional member of, uh, from the community with arts knowledge uh, that was appointed by the Arts Commission. Uh, so CAPA, uh, as, a, as a unit, uh, considers the merits of public art proposals at a public meeting uh, and makes a recommendation to the Arts Commission uh, to review and approve that denial. So whether or not today we receive an approval or a denial or additional information in context, that will then be brought forward to the Arts Commission at their next meeting for review. Uh, at which point, if the Arts Commission approves that application, we will then move that forward to the City Council for a final uh, review and approval. The committee must provide their uh, recommendation based on uh, several different criteria that's involved. So I want to point out a few of those major criteria uh, here. So uh, the committee must provide the recommendation based on the private developer's ability to adequately exemplify uh, for interior spaces, including lobbies such as this one. Uh, a project may be eligible if work of arts is accessible to the public a minimum of eight hours per day. Uh, and must be visible from the nearest public right of way. Developers must use the services of qualified public art consultant, whose role is to fulfill the requirements of the city's public art program in a professional and knowledgeable manner. Minim uh, minimum approval criteria considered by CAPA include, and we have definitions for each of these that we can provide later as well, um, quality, media, style, environment, permanence, Elements of design, diversity, and limitation. Uh, limitation meaning any artwork must be a one of a kind piece by others. So, uh, just to kind of set the table for why we're here today, the El Roblar Hotel sets the or meets the minimum requirement for uh, the public art ordinance, which applies to all commercial construction, remodeling, or repair uh, for any project exceeding $300,000 in value. So uh, in order to uh, sufficiently uh, meet the ordinance, the total amount expended on public art uh, by any developer must reach 2% of the total building valuation for the first million dollars invested in the property, and then 1% uh, thereafter up to the total building valuation. Failure to spend the minimum balance, which will be identified by our planning department, uh, will result in the remainder of that balance being forfeited to the city's public art fund. Uh, so, so today, just to review, again, the, the committee's role is going to be to hear the uh, proposal from our applicants uh, at the hotel, um, acknowledge uh, what their plans are, whether or not they meet the minimum criteria, um, and create a recommendation to then bring forward to the Arts Commission at their next meeting. Uh, so uh, with that being said, um, I, I think if there's any questions. Uh, no questions. No, we'll, we'll, thank you, Will. Uh, I also, also want to rec uh, recognize Mara from the uh, city staff as well. I may have already, but <laughs> thank you. you got your name right anyways. Uh, okay, so we're going to move on now to uh, our discussion and action uh, item. And for that, I'm going to yield the floor to Commissioner Steiner. Thank you. So Smitty has uh, yielded the floor to me because I chair the public art uh, com committee of the Arts Commission. Uh, thank you, Will, for that good introduction. This is called pursuant to Title IV, Chapter 16 of the Ojai Municipal Code, which addresses public art. And so, to be clear, the question is not whether El Roblar can commission this artwork for this space. Clearly, they can. The question is whether El Roblar can use percent for art funds to commission this artwork for this space, thus designating it to be a public work of art. And the public work of art, I'll go through it in a moment, but it means essentially that the city owns this work, though the developer is obligated to maintain it. And it, it is for the public good in the interests of the public. And so, to answer that question, we look to the plain language of, this, of the ordinance itself. And so the ordinance in 14.16.206 uh, directs the manner of satisfying this provision that, that Will outlined. And there are four possibilities. Either 
the uh, the commissioning party, the, the developer, can place an approved artwork on the site, which is this situation, or they can contribute an artwork to an alternative site. Uh, and often that occurs if, if that, say it's a residential area where it isn't appropriate to have public art, it can be designated to an approved alternate location. The third possibility is to donate an approved work of art to the public, or the city's public art collection. And the fourth is to contribute the equivalent funds to the public art fund to sort of go into a bigger fund that will then grow. Uh, will at some point will tell us the amount that is actually at issue here, um, but I'll, I'll keep moving on. Um, the uh, the El Roblar developers have submitted an application pursuant to 4.16.213, an appropriate application, which is before us. Uh, they used a qualified art consultant. They provided preliminary sketches and plans with suffic sufficient information for us to adequately evaluate the location and the compatibility uh, and the evidence that the artwork will be displayed in an open area that's accessible to the public. So they have satisfied those, uh, those requirements. Now, the ordinance directs COPPA to address both acceptability and suitability, as Will outlined, but I'm going to outline it again because the criteria are so important to understand. It's both acceptability and suitability. So under acceptability, that's our threshold consideration, and that's 4-16-209, and that provides that acceptable public art spaces are outdoor areas of a covered project that, that are accessible to and used by the public, that's not applicable here, or interior spaces, including lobbies such as this, if, to uh, two criteria, uh, it's accessible to the public a minimum of eight hours a day, and it is visible from the nearest public right of way. Now, assuming, excuse me, would it be possible to? Um, Double is required. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Now, assuming the acceptability uh, prong is satisfied, we then move to the criteria that's to be considered by this body. And uh, as Will noted, uh, that includes quality, the description of the media itself, the style of the work, the environment in which it's being presented, the permanence of the work itself, the elements of design, thank you, uh, and the, the, the diversity. So that gets us to the aesthetics and suitability, assuming that in fact, the threshold consideration of acceptability is met. Um, and so as Smitty noted, uh, we will then uh, make a determination and recommend to the Arts Commission whether to approve or disapprove the project. Um, and so with that as background, um, we will first have a presentation from the El Roblar um, people. We will then, uh, as Papa itself, address the suitability question as the threshold question before we address the aesthetics, uh, and um, and we will go from there. So please. So I recognize Ramin Shamshiri. Shamshiri, Ramin. Welcome. Uh, uh, could you say your name again? Yes, uh, my name is Ramin Shamshiri, and I am one of the uh, partners in the Hotel El Roblar, along with uh, Warner, I think, and Eric Goodson here. Ah, and, um, and Eric, I know, is, our, uh, is the art consultant for the project, <laughs> I understand. Yes, he is. <laughs> so thank you guys all for coming out today and to be here. Uh, we wanted to do it here, as you know, uh, you know, we've kind of been in the purchase of the hotel in 2008, 2018, or 19. Uh, been in construction since 21 now. 
we're just at the point where we're like, you know, about to put all the finishes up, all of our infrastructure is done. And, and um, so this lobby, we thought we'd have it in this lobby because this is where we want to put the, the mural up. Um, the intention for, you know, the hotel is always going to kind of bring it back to its original glory. And so um, we have some photos here, like the, the lobby and the original fireplace and the paneling. And so everything is kind of based on the original drawings of the hotel when it was um, built in 1919. So uh, this mock up that we have right now is digital print. <laughs> it's, you know, it will be hand painted. And I'm going to let Eric speak to it. But, um, you know, so it's just kind of the first pass, the first pass of the camera to match the. That, yeah. Nothing over Eric to talk about the art, artist in the airport. <laughs> A lot of people that use. Is this the so location? Yeah. Um, uh, well, it's going to be all around. Oh, nice. Okay. I'm Eric Good. I'm the consultant. Um, put this here one second. Um, so, yes, as Ramin said, the idea of the hotel, I think Wendy's right. The whole thing is a piece of art. And I, obviously, you have to focus on this. But in the end, we see our garden as like I don't know, Lotus Land or, you know, Botanical Gardens as a piece of art. Um, and the interior of the hotel, we're really trying to honor Ojai's history. And that goes back, whether it's Beatrice Wood or the Theosophers or Christian Murdy. Um, and there'll be photos uh, of those characters and the history of Ojai adorned throughout the hotel. Um, you mentioned the old mural that used to be here, or somebody does. The old mural was really eccentric and quirky, but it just had nothing to do with Ojai. It was flamingos and parrots, and it felt like you were in Costa Rica. And it was wonderful, but it just had nothing to do with Ojai. So we felt like, let's do a mural and let honor the, the luminaries from the history of Ojai. And so if you look at this very quick, um, this is a, a pass. This is not the was it, a formal dinner be. But, you know, in the very far right, you see Beatrice Wood under the cactus. And again, this is a, a quick pass. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have uh, Libby, we'll have uh, Christian Murdy, and, and we'll also be honoring Ojai's natural history. So we'll have California condors and, and the things that make Ojai really special and the Sespe watershed that'll be incorporated into this landscape, mountain lobbins or whatever. Um, and that's why you see the mountains and you see Ojai Valley and the mural. And the mural will go all the way around the lobby. Um, and I just to give you a little bit of my history, because you mentioned you wanted to be a local artist. And um, I come from New York. Well, I actually come from California, I guess, but I lived most of my life in New York. But I came here in the 60s. My father taught at Patrick School. And uh, I left in 69. But my father felt that Ojai didn't have an art culture, and particularly Thatcher, and so he started with his own school in Northern California that was called the School of Arts and Sciences that I attended. I later went to Parsons School of Design. I moved to New York City in the mid-70s and befriended all the artists of that sort of time, Andy Warhol and John Chabasca was one of, one of my closest friends, and Keith Haring, et cetera, et cetera. But, and I'm a terrible art snob, and I love low art and high art and outside of art. And so when you talk about the criteria, obviously it's highly subjective, right? But um, I think Ojai has a history of bringing people from outside. And so, you know, Beatrice Wood, I think, briefly dated Marcel Duchamp. And I think there's something wonderful about bringing artists from outside and using local arts very much so, so that there's inspiration. So not everything comes from one place, you know. So I, I say that to you because this artist was an artist uh, still alive that was a contemporary and part of the school of artists that were very important in New York City in the 80s, the Keith Harris and John Michelle Boscott. It's very different than, than you know, the sensibility of mm -hmm. but he happened to paint murals and did incredible murals with oil paint. And when this is finished, um, he's an, just an exceptional muralist. Uh, anyway, I, I wanted to show you uh, a little teeny book 
um, that might be well aware. This is a historic restaurant that I own in New York City. But a, a, a very famous illustrator from the New Yorker to the mural in this restaurant. And it's just sort of would show you sort of a model of how you could imagine a tour for the Arts Commission starting at the Clofts and coming through here. And really, I think it would enrich the tour so people can see you know, the history of Ohio that may not be depicted in the other 40 pieces that you have around town. But anyway, this mural um, is in this restaurant in West Village in New York City. And it, uh, you know, it's got Jackson Pollock, it has Andy Warhol, it has uh, lit famous literary people, et cetera, et cetera, contemporary and going into the past. So I just wanted to show it to you as an example of how a mural in, a, in this case, it's in a restaurant, a historic restaurant, um, can act as public art, effectively. Um, and we see this sort of being the same thing, but it's in the lobby of the El Robar Hotel. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Yeah, so I, uh, you know, we did look into local artists, and it just so happened that no one had the time. We had quite a few of them that moment in time. How many did you go to? Well, not a lot, but we went to a few, and um, the mural for one of them was going to take a year, how long? Eight right. months to paint? Yeah. And I think it was going to be $100,000. Yeah. $300,000. Yeah. Um, it's a very ambitious, detailed mural. Not to say, of course, someone you know how to paint it. But it doesn't have to be painted. This is not, a, I'm sorry, it's just oh, not, not a time to take questions, but please no, go on. Be any media, that it happens to be oil paint because that's what this particular artist works in. And his name is Stefano Castanova. He's originally Italian. Um, and he was known for putting up murals on buildings in mostly lower Manhattan <laughs> in the 1970s and 80s in New York City, along with other contemporary artists at the time that did that kind of thing, like Alex Katz and Chuck Close and Keith Haring, and, and, and there's a, you know, obviously a very um, robust history of public art in New York City with contemporary artists like those guys. And this is one of those. He didn't rise to the fame as the others, but he's in that school and he's very important. So anyway, that, that would be pretty much, um, unless you have questions, Thank what you. I would say about this. No, that's, that's very helpful. We will have questions, both of you and also of Ramin. And I do want to remind us that the question isn't whether you can have this mural in this space. The question is whether you can use the public art allocated funds for the presentation. I just want to make that clear to everyone. So, um, this would be the time for us to uh, address questions, and um, I'd like to suggest an order of question uh, of, of questioners. So we have two former commissioners, Barbara Hirsch and Susan uh, Stemsmulen Amend. Thank you to both. I'd like to call on Susan first as being uh, a a a. Um, more uh, an earlier serving commissioner, next to Barbara to ask questions, next to Smitty as chair of the Arts Commission, then to uh, Jamie Bennett as representative of the uh, planning commissioner, and then I will uh, address any remaining questions as cleanup batter. Um, so I would like us initially to limit ourselves to the threshold consideration, the question whether this work uh, is uh, accessible to the public a minimum of eight hours a day, and secondly, whether it's visible from the nearest public right of way. And once we all address those questions, assuming the answer to both of those is yes, we can get then get into the aesthetics and suitability. So I turn it over to Susan. Yeah. To ask I, I was ready to ask all the uh, aesthetic and conceptual questions about this, but I can see. Um, honestly, um, you what is a right of way? It's like the sidewalk walking yes, by. It's the, theoretically it's, that you could walk on the side. Are we talking about this particular space? On the sidewalk, you could turn your head and look inside and go, oh, there's 
that's the mural or can we get a staff or or maybe Jamie a uh, planning commission answer no, to that it, or? well the answer is the right of way is the street there there is no question that that is the public right so, of way and the sidewalk. sidewalk the sidewalk correct um, the reason I'm here is, is from the um, community development department and so anyway I can address that as well but and the public right of way is the sidewalk all ends up to the property line mm -hmm. and so the sidewalk right out here on, on Ohio Avenue is in fact considered public right of way. so Susan if you if you would prefer to address just the aesthetics and suitability we can defer well I, I have an opinion on this too um, and I thank you for that clarification because it's a little bit of a stretch to say that if you were looking for the public art that this sidewalk, you wouldn't. I mean, most people wouldn't. I would because I'm going, you know, I'd be looking. I don't know. Is the glass uh, reflective? Is it dark? Is it or is it completely clear glass that we're going to be able to see in? Okay. Um, and this is a driveway out here or entry, yes. uh, port and cachet or whatever. Yes. Um, then then it does, and that's as high as the wall's going to be out there that we're looking at from here. Then a head could look over here and see inside this building, and it will be lit. And I think it, in that case, I think it satisfies the barest minimum of being publicly accessible to the public. Um, and then the fact that it is open as I read, 24-7, 24, 24 hours a day um, to the public. And I hope you know what you're saying when you say that. But if that's honest, then then anybody can come in here and tour groups can come who are on the public art tour. You'll have to have a plaque that explains that it's part of the city public art collection. And, uh, you know, I don't know how often that will happen, but it's, it is a robust or growing collection that we are trying to promote and be proud of. And um, so I will say, since these two things, well, they didn't happen on my watch. One of them did. But there are two precedents for uh, paintings, basically, in a lobby space or in a private development space. And one of them is Seafresh has paintings of fish that they worked with a family member and they're they're on the wall in the back hanging as you would just pick up a painting and hang it on the wall. That's not the best example of public art in my mind, but that's what happened. Um, slipped, you know. And then the other is uh, two very large paintings by Pam Grau that are in the lobby of the Ojai Valley Inn. And I would say that this actually had more public access or right of way visibility than the Ojai Valley Inn does. But they also say it's open 24 seven, everyone's welcome to come here. So I, I just wanna say that it, the ordinance, you know, it has to be interpreted uh, it was, I think, today, I would say that it was interpreted slightly askew on those two projects, but I don't think we're basing what we're doing today on those. We're basing it on what this is and today's interpretation. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Barbara? Susan and I come from the same time period on, on the Arts Commission, and um, I was going to mention the other two projects. Um, but to me, I think this, the ability to come here at any time during the day and, um, you know, that would have to be delineated, um, would make this a, a really important public art piece. Thank you. Smitty, do you have any questions? And and again, we're we're addressing two issues. The first is whether it's accessible to the public, a minimum of eight hours a day, and whether it's visible to the, from the nearest public right of way. Uh, questions or well, we have quest questions of Ramin and Eric. Um, or observations that you would like to make. Well, 
Let me just uh, say that it's just wonderful what you guys are doing, and it looks beautiful, and I love this idea of incorporating OHI and, and all too. Uh, as chair of the commission, and we've recently uh, adopted a five-year plan, um, uh, and we're, we're pretty well aware of history as well, and uh, we've accumulated public art in OHI since the commission was formed, and we have a public art fund. The public art fund is dollars from the community that is to be used to uh, 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 to create beauty in Ojai. Um, and uh, as part of our five-year plan, we also uh, are doing an assessment of our current public art because we've accumulated a lot of um, a lot of art along the way and uh, there's a responsibility for upkeep there's a responsibility for um, uh, uh, for visibility that may not have been maintained. We just, um, we entered into a contract with a, uh, a consultant, uh, um, what would you call these people, uh, to take a look at the 40 some pieces of public art we have. And that, that it may end up whittling the list or bringing it down that don't fit in, in the purpose of our plan, which is to have a major art installation uh, in the future in Ojai. So I see this as money that is coming from uh, Ojai, you know, in the forms of fees. And we wanna make sure that we spend it in accordance with that as well. So the questions, so when I'm asking myself, does this meet the, uh, I'm sorry, do you call this accessibility? Uh, acceptability. Acceptability. Whatever it is you're asking, it 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 strikes me as um, a lobby art that is beautiful, um, and it and it certainly would make the impression if you came in here, but I'm not sure that it it, it reached the high standard of of uh, uh, of the uh, public art, which for the most part is statuary uh, in our community. So I'm uh, as much as I. Again, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I would love to hear about the quality and the media and the style and everything. And, uh, and I think that um, um, I have concerns that it's not accessible to the public. Wow. That's all okay, I so that, that's the question we're addressing now, the acceptability, is it accessible? We'll, we'll get next to the aesthetics. Uh, Jamie. Um, I'm looking out at a car window right there. And if there were a person sitting in that car window, I'd be able to discern their face, the details of their face. Uh, it's quite proximate to where the public walks. I mean, it's, probably, it's actually closer to where the walk is. So I think that the accessibility of this room, especially in the evenings when it's illuminated inside and and uh, people walking on the sidewalk would be able to look in and see it and be drawn in to see it. And it would be, from a timing standpoint, available, as, as we've been told, 24-7. So I think uh, there's no reason why uh, it would, in my mind, not meet the accessibility criteria. And I share with uh, uh, Mr. Good the... Uh, Thing about uh, other uh, great cities having public art in uh, public private spaces, uh, private in that they're owned by someone, but public in that they're accessible. Um, I think of the uh, King Cole Bar in the St. Regis in New York's same kind of thing as, as being referenced here. And it's a place that I show people when I'm, when I'm in New York uh, with somebody who doesn't know New York, I always drop in on the St. Regis Hotel to point out the, the bureau in the in the in the King Cole Bar. Good martinis and, there. And good martinis. <laughs> <laughs> but I I'm I, I think the idea of having a place like that right downtown here, a place where if somebody could take a local person to take a an outside visitor and show them a bureau, particularly one which represents uh the sort of history of the space. Uh, is is very exciting, and uh, I'm not going to the merit at this point of the art itself. I think that's a very difficult subjective area, but I do I do like it. I agree with my colleague who said uh, there's a tradition of of outside people coming in and doing things, and uh, 
I think limiting ourselves to having only <laughs> Ohio artists would be a, a mistake and not as enriching as bringing in um, uh, wonderful uh, artists of any sort, muralists or statue, uh, the creators of statues. And uh, so, anyway. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. I, I have one quick question. It, it, if I may, Susan, okay. let, let me Fine. proceed and then we can all, we can go, we can do another yes. round if you would like yes. or, or have additional questions. Um, so the criteria are, will it be accessible for a minimum of eight hours a day? And I assume the answer there is yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Just to be clear, I have hotels in New York City, and we have to stay open 24 hours. Yeah. No, I understand. It's just it's just a simple question, a, a yes or no. Yeah. 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 We, we assumed so. And, and in fact, that was in your application. That was addressed in your application, but what was not addressed was the second prong, and that is the visible from the street. And I have very serious concerns there. And the concerns, if I understand the mural correctly, it runs the entirety of the areas above the paneling. Is that correct? Yes. I think it from the images you provided, it is gorgeous. I think you have substantiated that your artist has the responsibility, the reliability, and the capability to do this project. But what troubles me is that I don't think this work will be visible from the nearest public right of way. I just don't see how it can be. And perhaps, uh, well, I have a few questions. Are these your doors? Are the, the doors as in are the doors with the, the four panels? Uh, they have a bit of um, tone to them. Will they no. maintain that? Okay, they're, they're clear, they're clear they're glass. Here. Okay. Um, I mean, I hate, especially with, with one of our members um, with an accessibility issue, but I really think we need to know whether this work is visible from the nearest public right of way, because I think it is not. So can we take a, a walk out through your rubble and see whether we can, in fact, see the entirety of this work? from the public right of way. I thought maybe what would help is if we left this on at night and then in the evening, you're certainly going to see it. Uh, well, it, 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 I think the, we can do the, that. The timing, the, the criteria provides that it has to be visible from the nearest right of way. It doesn't say at night. It doesn't say with illumination. It has to be visible and we have to be true to the criteria this criterion under the statute. It, it doesn't say in, in its entirety. Yeah. You added the word. To I did add that word, but the work, it is, it is the work. So let's see if we can see the work. And if, if, if this committee is comfortable that it can be seen in fragments, we can certainly address that. But I think we need to know if we can see it. And can, can I ask a question about that? Was the Ohio Valley Inn in their part that's in their lobby, were they subjected to the same criteria? So I think what happened there, again, Susan and Barbara addressed it a bit, yeah. but whatever would have happened under a different COPPA, a di under a different committee to approve public art, does not govern what is to be done with this committee. And I think there are distinctions as well. So that is in a remote location, inherently remote. This, and I, and I think we can see by the interest of the public, this, we are so excited that the El Roblar is going to be here. We congratulate you for your, your effort, all your money you're pouring into making this an exciting asset for our town. And again, the only question question is not whether you can do this work, it's whether you can commit the public funds to this work. Is the spirit of this idea, though, to get eyeballs on it? Isn't that the spirit? Because I would argue that more people, because of the location, obviously, oh, I got it, is not in a throughway of downtown Florida. Right, right. This will be seen probably, I would argue, more than Probably much of the public art you have now. You don't even need to argue. We okay. agree with that, but that is not, not that is not That's the prong right. under the statute. And so I think we need to figure out whether it's visible. 
Uh, my only question is given, you know, if you go to, through downtown Ojai and you were discussing public arts and lobbies, what building would be more visible than this one unless it's right on the street? I mean, there's glasses reflected during the day, so it's going to be harder to see during the day. But most public lobbies, I imagine, you're not going to get that much more visible than this unless it's closer. So what, what, which building would match that criteria? Because it's hard for me to see how something would be much different than this one. But but, but the criteria is not whether it's visible. The criteria is whether you can use the public funds for the work that right. is or is not visible. Good. So you have, are you suggesting we do this I, right now? I, I think we need to I do think, it right now. I think now, that's a so good that, idea because it's up to this, uh, up to this question. committee to, to, to do that. I don't, I don't know if you're, you're okay. You, you take a look. Okay. It's, no, I think this is part of the meeting. Yeah. yeah. And if you can bring the camera, bring it up. So I'll tell you what we see. I can see I guess you can do it. out. I don't know. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, you stay here. I won't take it
Okay, we're back in order. Back in session. So you want to warmer out. outside. Do you want to say we took a jury view for five minutes, or and then and now we're so the uh, the uh, uh, our capo. We we went outside and walked to the right of way and looked in and um um or uh. If if we can um, talk about the the public uh, accessibility of it, and we can either qualify it or disqualify. Let's say if we can disqualify it on that, uh, is there a need then to um, no? To I mean, talk about the uh, no, uh, subjective parts. No, if it's not acceptable, then we don't get to the question of aesthetics and suitability. Uh -huh. So I think what we do now is. Uh, discuss and essentially take a vote on whether it is uh, as this threshold matter acceptable. And uh, I'd Please. be pleased to speak first. Um, I was concerned about this issue, as you know, from what I said earlier, and stepping outside to the sidewalk from all perspectives, it was clear to me that this work could not be seen from the public right of way. And so it's my view that it does not qualify because it is not visible from the nearest public, that it does not qualify to be used for uh, a percent for art program because it does not, it is not visible from the nearest public right of way. Um, okay, we'll just go down, next? we'll just go down the line here. Um, I couldn't see it. I, I couldn't. I couldn't see this. And I couldn't see in the door. There, used to, there was a fountain here. I think the return that was a, is a piece of public art that sits right the, out there in the courtyard and is visible from the street. Um, so I, 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 as beautiful as it is, and as beautiful the space is, as beautiful as the art is, I have to justify that that the people's money is used for um, painting, uh, bringing art to the lobby of this hotel. And uh, and I, I I could not see it from the from the sidewalk. I could see the doors, and I imagine whatever landscaping will go in there will will be beautiful as well. But will also be uh, will draw the eye toward that. So um, I I couldn't see it. So that's thank you, uh, Barbara. Barbara, I didn't go outside, mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking of what Jamie was saying about looking outside to the cars and into the cars. Um, but I, I understand what you're saying. Um, I am familiar with an 80 foot mural that's in the lobby of Goldman Sachs in New York. It was done by Julie Moreto. And um, the glass there is clear. Um, and you can see the entire mural from standing in front of that window. I don't, I don't think that you could see that here. Well, you could only see part of it in any case because you wouldn't be seeing the whole the whole room. So I'm in that camp. We're not like voting now, but we're just yeah. like getting your impression. Susan. Uh, Susan? Well, I worked with glass. Glass is mutable always, and it's reflective, and it depends on where the greater source of light is as to whether you're going to see one thing or another, or you're going to see what's behind you, or you're going to see yourself. These are not big glass uh, area of space, um, but I don't think it's, you know, just looking at the other buildings across the street, they're all reflecting us or this building or so any artwork that would be in the lobby of a building is going to have most likely going to have glass on the out as the 
surface of that that space. And um, you know, I mean, it depends on the building, like you were saying. Um, I know there's what the gas building downtown LA has some giant murals by Tony Berlant, or I can't quite remember, but you know, sometimes when I drive by and I know there's public art inside of these buildings, uh, in the public art program in LA, um, sometimes I can see it, sometimes I can't, depending on where the light is and where the sun is in the sky. And uh, so it's it's a mutable situation. I don't, in some ways, I go, when could you ever have public art in a lobby that you expected somebody on a drive-by to be able to see in or a walk-by. Um, and there's plenty of examples of that kind of work all over the world. Um, this is a small lobby space. These are not full wall murals. There's, their size is relative to the scale of the space. So, you know, for a couple of reasons about scale and the glass and the light, when this is lit properly or the way it's going to be lit in when it's done at night, you probably will be able to drive by and see, you know, not a, this is small. I mean, not, you're not going to see exactly what's going on, but you might be intrigued by, if you didn't know anything, by the beauty of the space. Whether it's the best use of public art bunnies. Um, considering the code, it's probably, you know, if you rate it percentage wise, it's probably not, you know, 100% of what we want it to be, or what you want it to be, what the city wants it to be. Um, but, you know, Be it that I also have I you know some thoughts about the aesthetics and and the you know the whole process of what's here. I would say that I'm still open to the idea that this is accessible to the public, so I'm not voting no. Okay. Thank you. Right. Not voting yet, Jamie. We're not voting, Jamie. Uh, I believe it's accessible, as I said earlier. Um, okay. and accessible to the extent required by this measure, I have deep concerns that if we start um, getting into nitpicking these things and reject them because we want to harvest the public money, it's my understanding from the reading of the materials developed by the city over, over some period of time, that these projects are supposed to be proposed by the developers mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and I don't think we have a more sympathetic developer ever in Ojai than this team of developers. And if we manage to shut down a very interesting art piece, which I believe is accessible, um, what good developer are we going to attract? You know, this is this is one this they're they're representing something that. It is, with the exception of putting a sculpture out by the sidewalk, you know, this is a very interesting interior project, which will be visible enough to draw people in to see it. And, you know, we could, again, we, we could spend a lot of time going through this and nitpicking it, but I believe that uh, it meets the, the requirement uh, and, uh and we need to move on and we need to treat this proposal with the respect that it deserves because it's such a well thought out proposal. And uh, uh, and again, I'm often concerned, who's gonna wanna do a project in this town? If this, if this thing, if this project, uh, you know, doesn't meet the criteria and, and it's a judgment call on the criteria. And I believe it is a judgment. Well, my okay. judgment is it's accessible enough to get people to want to come in and observe a mural. And what murals are uh, are visible, except for maybe you know a, a mural in New York City on a glass building, uh, what murals are visible in their entirety from from the sidewalk? Mm -hmm. um, so okay, thank you. So your view is that it's visible from the nearest public right of way. Yes. Okay, because that's really the only yeah. issue we're yeah. addressing at yeah. this point. Um, 
So assuming the answer is yes, that it, that it meets the acceptability criteria, we would then address the aesthetics questions. So I think the only way for us to get there, and I think to answer your question of of whether there would be other projects, I think that the, the criteria is identified in the statute. So I think other developers would, in fact, um, satisfy that criteria. And we certainly agree with you that this is a very worthy project. And it's, you know, it's very exciting to the city. The question is whether it meets the criteria. So I think what we should do um, is take a, uh, take I turn a, it over to you. Um, I think we take a vote on Would you like to uh, make a motion? Um, mm -hmm. I can't. Yeah, uh, I think. I could do it in the positive or negative. I, I would make a motion that this, uh, that it, this it, committee. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I think the motion is uh, whether, whether the work is visible from the nearest public right of way. I think mm -hmm. it's a very simple motion under the statute. And I think we simply take a yes, no vote. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking this through on the Arts Commission because we're just referring this to the Arts Commission where there could be yeah. further discussion. So, uh, so this that would disqualify it if it was not visible in the opinion of uh, uh yeah I'll take it yeah Jamie what yeah, do you think is <laughs> you know since I believe it's a judgment call and that's mm -hmm. what I'm, I'm arguing I believe that based upon my judgment watching people walk down the street there and see them seeing me and, mm -hmm. and the art works really up higher so they can see that even more clearly there's a judgment call here and I don't know that we need to have a threshold vote on the question of accessibility and say, okay, well, it's got to be accessible. And, that, and we're going to use that as a black and white for any other discussion. Yeah. But it's put in the it's put in the mix that there is a that there is a breadth of of, of opinion on this matter. Mm -hmm. As there may be a breadth of opinion on a number of other things. Mm -hmm. And that, that the that the that the committee vote when all the issues have been discussed. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't you know I think I, everyone has a right to discuss what they they have, but I, I reject Christine's uh, uh, idea that there must first be a, a threshold that's got to be accessible. Uh, sure, to this. sure. Well, we're just trying to be well, cognizant of people's time today, and there, we don't need. You know, uh, I don't think it's about time, Jamie. It's it's it. it under the ordinance, it's a threshold determination whether the work is acceptable, and I think we have to take a vote on that, and we have to make a determination as a recommendation. We can then equally address the criteria under aesthetics and suitability, but I think we first have to address this threshold question. And so, with all due respect, I think we need to call a vote on on this motion, and I think the motion is that. Uh, that we recommend to the Arts Commission whether the work is or is not visible from the nearest public right of way. And discussion? I'll second it. Now we can have discussion. Yeah. Yes. Um, one other thing I wanted to add is that uh, from a previous requirement of from the Oaks, there are four pieces of tile, mur smaller tile murals on the front of the wall uh, done by RTK tiles that reflect nature in Ojai, oranges, et cetera. And that's part of the public art uh, tour, as it were. And it's on, so people are already going to be coming here to look at that. So it kind of couples up with the idea of a more public uh, intentional. And just. Mm -hmm. but can I ask a question? Um, because you could have been quite, you know, like the art that was yeah. pretty minded enough for the World Trade Center shut down for two beads of light, right? There's some art that's designed to be seen at night. And I guess my question is when all the other art can't be seen, you can see this. And how long in the, in the day, your, your criteria, do you need to be able to see it? Because maybe you just see this in the evenings, and this is a special piece of art in the lobby. Context that you can come and have your gin and tonic and see this on when you're walking by. Because I, I would argue you probably can see it in the evening when you're walking, and this will be glowing, and this, you know, this hero was illuminated. And so I just would ask you, yeah, what's the thank you. Is it 10 minutes out of the day? Or is it well, I, can, I, I, think we can, I think we can actually make a clarification on that as well. 
there's the, the accessibility to be able to enter the space is eight hours, whereas the uh, the criteria to view the actual artwork, there is no set time. It's just whether or not at any point you could. And I think the answer is you can if it's in the evening. Mm -hmm. so, Excuse me. Good. Also, sorry. Um, yes. Uh, right. Do I call you commissioner or committee member or committee? Commissioner. Very formal. Um, I wasn't sure what the motion was that you seconded. Okay, the motion and, and minutes are, are on the video right now. So the motion was that the, well, it was your motion, but that we refer. The, the, the motion is whether this, did, did you I write wrote, down? I wrote down. Okay. I wrote down. Okay. I, I'm just curious. I'm, 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 here, Thank you. I'm here with you at the table, and I just wasn't sure if you were making a motion that it was not accessible or that it was accessible. It, it, we no, we are, we're, we're going to take a vote on that question. Uh, acceptable is rather than accessible. Acceptable. acceptable. Right. The, the, the Will will read the motion. Sure. So just so everyone uh, has a clear motion, I didn't manage just to make it clear. Um, I believe that the motion was to recommend to the Arts Commission that the public art proposal uh, be denied on the grounds that it does not meet the accessibility criteria. Acceptability. Except, acceptability criteria. And the the uh, so a positive and I would be that it does not meet. Yes. Yeah, so okay. So it'd be yes if you were right. voting to. Okay. Vote discussion to continues. Vote. I I I wanted to I wanted to. Discussed. Sorry, can we please have the staff over? Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to leave again. All right. Again, I hear everything you're saying. You're going out there, I mean, I think how it's written in, you know, the, the kind of laws that we're drawn by here, but they're not even see it. I mean, I, I think it's an obvious a subjective opinion. I mean, I go out there and I can actually see it, you know, clearly from when I was standing there. But it's like, how well can you see it? I guess it's another question. So I don't know how you justify that. It's, it's fairly subjective. Um, but my question really was like, you, you mentioned like that there's a public art tour that comes to look at the tile murals out there. So if, if this gets denied, you know, at that point, then we, we're not, we don't, we don't have to have the doors open for the public art tour. This is not for the public art. I just wanted to ask it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, if, if, if it's denied, as you know, you have a certain uh, percentage obligation. So you can, you can do one of the four things with it, as I said earlier. You can either commission this work, or you can put it into the fund, or you can commission something elsewhere, or... You can donate uh, an approved work to the, the city. Yeah. So, um, if if it is denied, you can, as I said earlier, of, of course commission this work. It's just that it would belong to you, El Roblar, rather than belonging to the city of Ojai. And I think that is an important distinction. But well, we have no requirements to. But you would not. That that is correct. You you would not have to open it up. You wouldn't have. You can do whatever you want. Okay. You know. You can. You could. You could destroy it. You wouldn't have to maintain it. You wouldn't have to do all the things you'd have to do under the statute. You could do whatever you want, subject to your obligations under the Visual Artists Rights Act and the California Art Preservation Act. Um, but I do, I do have a question before we take this vote, and 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 I'm sorry if this is a distraction, but I think I I think Eric raised a very good point, and I wonder whether it wouldn't make sense to recess this committee until an evening when we reconvene. I'm sorry to put you through this, but if if there is an argument that the evening visibility and the potential for opening the doors even during the day would so dramatically increase the visibility of the work i think that might influence kappa and then and and might influence our recommendation and so well we're we're in discussion here right now um um let we have a and we have a motion on the floor so why don't i just sort of add that uh um again it's beautiful again i see it, but i i see this as a pri uh, as a as a private space uh from a privately owned business we've had two public uh comments uh that were entered into the record that were, that, that were opposed to this uh as being a a public space i want to be cognizant of our public comments uh and what what i also um want to point out that 
It doesn't matter what happened in the past or in New York. This is Ojai, and as a, as a commissioner of the Arts Commission, I want to be respectful of our arts fund, which is the people's money. And so I keep coming back to, if this is the people's money, is it the people's art or is it the El Robler art in their lobby? And so, uh, and when I walk out there, I, I remember there was a fountain here that is or was a piece of public art as well. And even that, I, I, I didn't, I never even saw it until I was taken on a tour and, and pointed out to it. Some of the, there's a lot of tile work like that in town, where it's through uh, breezeways to be between public areas rather than leading into a private uh, private location. So um, those those are what are swaying me more. I, I, I firmly believe we have to be good stewards of the permitting process and, and supporting our business owners in town that are trying to move ahead with something. Uh, but I don't think this is a question of that. I think this is a question of, is this indeed meet the criteria for being uh, public art? And that's why I'm inclined to vote, as you guess, I'm inclined to vote. Uh, we're still in discussion before we do a roll call on the vote. If oh. anyone has something to say. I will say that the fountain that was out here was not part of the public art okay. requirement for money. No. Okay. Um, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And... I looked at it a lot, as well as all of the plantings and what we see from the street that are going to happen and are happening now for the outside of this property. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of public presence of aesthetics, of a high aesthetic mm -hmm. that is going to be happening. Mm -hmm. That I, I, I guess I'm, as you know, I've already said what I think. So mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to look at the whole thing and and yes the idea that there's you know some kind of elite well you know nature to the experience of seeing the murals like coming into an elite hotel and most of the people who are going to see it have paid money to be here it, that bothers me a little bit because it's not like the you know the the, to the the climbing equipment over in the public in Libby Park you know that's artwork that kids are climbing, but that was public, public art. This is private public art. And I'm, I was just trying to imagine buildings like Reigns, where would Reigns put their public art requirement on or in their building? It, it, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's tricky. Yeah. I, so I'm weighing all these things in my head, mm -hmm. but yeah. So if there's any other discussion, I'll just call for a roll and we'll, well, we'll see um, how this goes. It, if we may, I, I do think I proposed a substitute motion and i'm well, sorry to be can um, i second um, smitty's proposal just so we have a proposal on the floor that has been seconded and we propose a second what what's proposal uh, is it well that we move forward well i think what he was saying is move forward with the vote yes but i was saying that i have a substitute motion which is to take a recess for a moment come back again and see the work at night in order for us to determine whether there's disability. Because I think I think the developers have made a very, and, and the commissioning parties have made a very important point, which is that it is visible. And so before we take a vote, yay or nay on visibility, I would rather entertain their strong view that in the evening, it's going to be visible. That's my that's my substitute motion. Would that have to be a uh, uh, a public meeting and? Uh, yeah, it would have to be noticed. Yes. We're we're simply taking a recess, and then we will we will reconvene, assuming our hosts can accommodate us in the evening hours when uh, and and they are they are nodding yes. No, I don't think tonight. <laughs> I, I think we 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 would notice it. We would properly notice it. We would have we would essentially continue this meeting at at a time at, at this place at a time when it would be evening hours, and we could determine visibility. So, so just to be clear, that would be a motion to set uh, an additional, so basically end this meeting without a decision Re and then create uh, an additional meeting to then come to a recommendation. Uh, mm, I, I don't think we would end this meeting. I think we, we would recess this meeting and we would reconvene in an evening hour when we can determine visibility. 
May I have a friendly amendment to that? Mm -hmm. um, that the discussion of the in that in that meeting would be limited to the visibility at night um, of the uh, of the proposed mural. There is that, that at night we wouldn't start a new set of public comments and so on and so forth. And, uh, well, 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 we're continuing the meeting, so there's no new new public comments. That's correct. Okay. But but so I understand your motion. You wouldn't want, assuming we all determine yes, it's visible. Right. We would then move on to the aesthetics and suitability. I don't want us just to limit it to. That yeah. because because we want to we want, just, we want to give them an answer we want to resolve this I I, I would agree yeah. with that I just I what I didn't want to do is have a, a new pledge of allegiance it's, it's right right no it's not a new meeting it's well, it's not a new meeting it's a it's a recess and a continuation. Um, uh, either look. I don't know if we need a second on that, but I'd like a uh, discussion on it anyways about taking a uh, uh, recess. Recess. I second that motion. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, I don't know what we're going to be looking at because the lighting is yes. not in yet. The mural's not in yet. I think we have some experience in our lives that when a light is on inside of a structure, you're going to be able to see, and you know, our experience tells us that we will see Doesn't inside of that structure. Mm -hmm. Of course. But the mural is not going to be up. The lighting is not properly installed yet, um, if we were planning on doing it anytime soon. So if I, I, if I could interrupt, I think what we would do is just copy that again. Yeah. Thank you. We would set it up so that it would mimic, it would look as close as possible to what it would be. Mm -hmm. You get the idea. I'm not going to have you just look at this, and we would light it for that day that you got on that evening and come. Sorry, Barbara, do you have anything? No, I, I agree. I said. Would you like to do that? All right. So I would need to. Uh, so as part of this discussion, right? I I think I'm I'm open to that, but I I just it doesn't it does it doesn't feel right in terms of public uh, visibility. I mean, you guys know how I feel about that. And if we could vote on that right now and put this to bed, it would still happen. It would still be beautiful art, I believe, and, and it just wouldn't be part of the uh, the public's money. But I will, out of respect to my uh, committee members, I'll, I'll, I'll withdraw my motion to vote on the um, on the uh, acceptability. Yes, and uh, recess this meeting until um, until you guys uh, applicants advise us that you're ready to. <laughs> Light it up. <laughs> yeah. I really just have to say all of it to a softball and I see what you're grappling with. Yeah. And I did I, Thank I you. Think it was Sorry, I think we should I think we should try to keep our best to, to But what do you do with a science? Mm -hmm. You have said that not me, but it was a storm. What do you do for public? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wait, sorry. Right, right. I think yeah. we are we'll yeah. come back to that. We're on the committee right now. I think more has a call. Right to have the discussion back and forth is that's already been closed, um, so needs to just stick with. Me. Yeah, I can yeah. just uh, I can just do use my gavel and, and yeah, just but, just but also, recess. I'd like, like to um, say two things. So if you're not going to continue, I think I think the word is continue. And if you're not going to continue to date certain, then we will notice have a public notice out for the, the <laughs> next meeting. And um, and also something that I'm not sure on but I'm not sure that the committee is either, and I will find out before the next meeting, and that is to whether or not when you start the next meeting that's being continued from this meeting, do you start with Pledge of Allegiance and public comments? No, because we're opinion? just on recess. Yeah, we're, we're simply okay. recess. No. Okay, so so in my in my experience, um, actually, I, I would just like to confirm that, and in the, that's the way it is when we come back to the next, the next the sure. meeting. That's fantastic. Um, but I would like to put on record that I'm going to be looking into that. And Will, did you have something? Yeah, I just wanted to add as well, since we will be noticing the public and uh, beginning that meeting in a new space with new members of the public, um, and we, we can't presume that, that everyone will be present, I think we would have to formally make that into a secondary meeting. So we would call it an okay. additional meeting. It would have to be a formal secondary meeting where we do go through the entire procedure again. And open up to public comments. Yes. So, so do, you, do we that, need to adjourn? You're saying we, so we staff says we should adjourn this meeting? Motion that we do not come to this issue today.
mm -hmm. and then adjourn. And then we would motion that we are going to have a secondary, or before we adjourn, motion that we're going to have a second meeting okay. uh, where we do come to uh, an additional agreement. Uh, I think we will also need to make sure that we're including in the motion that it needs to be at night where we can uh, yeah. view this space. Well, I think you'll simply make it that it will be an evening meeting, which would be better for the public in any event. And we can also then address the accessibility. That's fine. I, would, I thought it was easier. Uh, yeah, so make easier. your make your motion uh, formally, please. Uh, so, uh, yes, yeah, so I move that we adjourn this meeting that we uh, notice a new meeting to be held in during evening hours where we will address the criteria under the statute, both the acceptability as well as the uh, aesthetics and suitability. Your point. A second. I second. All right. So, question. Discussion. Yes. Um, uh, so we should. So we should just wait to talk about anything else about this project yes. until the next meeting. No, right. I think because it does. I I think it makes sense that if I felt like we were close here to just saying that it wasn't public art and let them do whatever they want and it'll be beautiful. Let's, okay, let's but we're not going to. We're not we going to have that. No, we so, are, we are not discussing it. Anymore. Not discussing the the aesthetics. So I apologize. I thank the. But I thank. Can, the, I, can can we we also, yes. I also suggest that um, when we meet again, that um, there will be further description of the concept of the artwork and you know, more detailed description from the developers about mm -hmm. the actual project. Well, um, I, I, I mean, I don't know, Susan, the, the developers had provided what they were ob obligated to do. So under 4.16213. And if you have questions about the criteria, we can certainly address those in the next meeting. Okay. But I don't think they have any obligation to provide additional material. So do we, uh, shall we vote um, on I'm, the journey? Unless or there's more discussion yeah. here. So, so just for clarification, so the motion will be to adjourn this meeting to another time where we to, can- To an evening time. To an e yes, where we can reconvene the committee to assess the visibility of the artwork in the evening. Does, does not the chair have a, can I just adjourn a meeting on my own, but does that need to be voted? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think I can. We could just read out and make a decision on the- um, but all in favor of this, just for uh, say aye. It seems like the right way to go. Aye. Okay. You okay, Jim? Um, but no, but, but that's for personal reasons. No, just just give me a chance. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. All right. So uh, should, should we look at our calendars now? I mean, these this is a busy group of people. Mm -hmm. Let's do. So I think I, I think we can communicate with everyone and reach out directly to make sure okay. that we can communicate. I want to do it fast. Uh, yeah. I want to. These guys yeah, deserve. Uh, yeah. they, you can they, do that out there. They, but they deserve a decision soon. So if you yeah. could get yeah. Yeah, we can get yeah. that to you all. Definitely. Great. Yeah. So great. Great. To make sure we're I see, I see that. Yeah, I ask our hosts that they provide us a slightly better accessibility for, uh, yeah. for the Let's disabled. Uh, I, I, and I ask, yes. Ramin, I'm sorry, Ramin, Eric, excuse us. You you have just, uh, Eric, yep. please. There's, there's been a request. Jamie, if you could. Well, in the evening, if you could have something covering those. We need better accessibility. Yeah. Yes, I think we would need to do that. We need to have okay? public right of way. If you could open because we can meet out there in a meeting chambers if we, if it was inconvenient. Or we could take a walk out, but as long as we could do that. And as long as the accessibility yeah. is, yeah, We're yeah, great, great, great. All right, so that vote passes so, uh, okay. four to one. So staff will certainly be communication yeah. with all of you yeah. to schedule an additional time, um, and the vote passed for it. Yeah, and and Ramin and Eric Smitty noted that we want to do this as soon as possible because you guys deserve a decision quickly. So why do you think you might do it? So we'll, we'll have staff will staff will handle that. To putting this together soon. 
All right. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you. Public staff, thank you. Uh, thank you for your attention. Um, this meeting is adjourned.